Всем добрый день. Здравствуйте. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Tatiana, and I'm here today to talk to you about mobile applications security. And this is my co-speaker, Yefimi, and also Marina and some other people out there in the room. We work for Upscreener. It's a SAS. And the reason we decided to talk to you today about mobile application is pretty straightforward. It's just our task for the quarter, to increase coverage of uh, mobile applications and uh, rate of detection of vulnerabilities in mobile applications. But realize that the beginners do start with web and know little about security in mobile applications. Hence, this beginners uh, 101 kind of presentation and Yefimi is going to give you proof of concept of each of the vulnerabilities in the context of mobile applications so let us begin uh, some information about us our contact details, and this is the uh, plan for today. So first off, I'm going to tell you a few words about the general approach to um, application, mobile application security and what were the books and, uh, you know, the things that you should read as a beginner. And I'm going to introduce you to SAS Dust and, and then we'll go on with the practical. A part of it, we're going to look at all safe mobile application that serves as a way to illustrate three vulnerabilities. We'll look at SQL, SQL injection and how to find it in uh, by by SAST and how static analyzer is capable of doing it um, automatically. And we're going to look at uh, arbitrary uh, code execution and. Uh, uh, we'll have proof of concept from uh, Yifi. So let us start by looking at what we already have in terms of uh, um, mobile application safety, OWASP. We have Web OWASP Top 10, and there is also Top 10 for mobile applications. So basically, these are the insecurities that can often happen with mobile applications. Most interestingly, the latest updated version is as of 2016. So security people still work with the thing that was released quite long ago. 2016 is long ago. I think it's not a good thing, but hopefully they'll update it soon. Uh, OBASP also has mobile application security verification standard. Uh, which includes eight chapters, and each chapter has requirements, which are kind of sub-points. So these are the requirements that you need to comply to be a safe mobile application. So it's good for your own uh, awareness, and it works great with MSTG. Mobile Security Testing Guide from OWASP that gives you greater details and um, I think it's, it's a good reading to, you know, dive into the topic. So how does it work? For example, we have a point in MAS VS that says that you shouldn't have sensitive information in application logs. And there is a link to MSG uh, um, storage 3. And you can see here a more detailed description and how to uh, search for it using static analysis. The points to look at are highlighted here, and also a separate uh, chapter for dynamic analysis, how to confirm it and how to see it. And an interesting Excel spreadsheet with all these requirements enumerated and nice links on how to uh, interconnect mass, uh, my SV, SV and um, MSTG. And then you just uh, use the coding pass, no pass. 
This is what we use when we increase coverage for our SAST. We were um, using these requirements. When I say SAST, I mean we have source cost. When I say DAST, it means we don't have a source cost and we need to uh, interact with it, introduce payload and look at the reactions, kind of trigger it. And this is what we're going uh, to use on all safe to train, to, to do the training. All kind of injection uh, search is started by looking for uh, the entry points and then you look at when it get, comes all the way to um, the interested to the context of interest we wait for the data say get to the request to the database in case of sql injection talking of mobile application uh, safety we split it into two th three parts we we'll look at uh, uh, the server part and when we speak of sql injections uh, we associate it with server part so on to what's of interest to mobile applications. Bad practice is to store uh, sensitive data in the database of a local uh, device. Because in, in this case, we can't get the profit. And this is kind of an additional information uh, that could be used for a different um, attack. So this is part of code. I'll say if everything is easier, we're only interested in entry point and execution point. Entry point is uh, the UI of the mobile application and also data from uh, the file system sent through deep links, etc., specific for UI. And then username gets into the request and is sent to the database. All this process is automated uh, by taint analysis. It's done manually. It's rather difficult, especially if it's obfuscated code and if methods and uh, classes are single letter ones. So taint analysis, taint analysis uh, is what helps here. This is how it looks in reality. So we have various challenges. A data entry point is pretty obvious because you can see it here, SQL injection. So we'll look using various uh, test data, nothing interesting, nothing exciting here. There are entry uh, fields here. We introduce an inverted uh, corner and the application crashes, which means that uh, there is a problem here. After just uh, uh, Googling what uh, SQL injection is and copying what it is into here, we can see that uh, our exploit does work. And um, we can still, uh, what we can see Uh, that the challenge has been passed. And actually, this is made obvious that critical critical data should not be uh, stored in a database. There are other mechanisms to do that. Um, and in the 6.2, it says that all data should be validated and it's not 
um, it's, it's not uh, true. Then arbitrary code execution. We're going to talk to about it in the context of mobile applications. So it's uh, something that we sometimes see in mobile applications because uh, in mobile applications, developers extend through plugins if we have a plugin a modular architecture. And if it's an ecosystem of uh, applications from one trusted uh, vendor, you don't have to realize all the functions in one application and uh, realize it in various applications. And uh, uh, this can be used in Android, and it could lead to vulnerability if you don't check everything right. So this is how it looks in code, and we're interested in this very part. Just to give you brief information, first we use Package Manager to check what other applications are there uh, in uh, on the on the user side. We check all the packages, and then our load class and get method that expects that in the second application there is a class loader. Uh, realized in for second advantage uh, and the uh, load plugin in it. So if you realize that, if the adversary realizes that, then the check for uh, the prefix beginning you can see here, right? Then all the trusted applications uh, should start with this prefix and the developer thinks it's enough. Well, it's not. The secure version is this. You can see this if on the screen, but you really have to have an additional step of checking uh, for signature. So we can see here actions with class loader that expects us to see the application and load plugin method. Uh, to, so, so now we have the UID of uh, our main application and the adversary's application. And this is how this exploit works. Let's suppose we haven't seen anything that Tatiana demonstrated. We only have a, a, um, the APK uh, file, which is to use the uh, utility to unpack the uh, binary compressed applications and disassemble the code. Next thing we'd, we do is look at the files. We would look for certain uh, constructs and we'll see a smiley instance. It's for virtual, for Davlik virtual machine. Then we reconvert it into the view that is more understandable to those who work with this format for the first time. And then we uh, launch proof of concept. And now we can launch the video. Right. So APK tool D parameter allows us to unpack our all safe application, then we uh, open the file in this environment here, then we look at various files like Android manifest, we look at Android manifest, we look at the um, folders, folder tree, Low class is of interest for us for this kind of uh, vulnerability. And in arbitrary code execution file, and it's very straightforward because uh, it's uh, a training environment, we can see a um, smiley format, which is not very clear for those who see it for the first time. So using Javex uh, utility, we um, transform it into Java format, which is more readable. It's going to be a little bit different from the initial, from, from uh, the source code. But uh, <laughs> so 
So we open arbitrary code execution and then through deep parameter, we look at where the uh, uh, file should be. And here we can see that we have a check, start with decode. The package name has been checked. And then uh, we call the correct uh, login, and that makes it clear which exploits to write. What we do next, we use this exploit. We didn't, we, uh, we didn't record the process of writing the exploit, but now we put the exploit on the uh, mobile application using Android Debugging Bridge utility. Um, that allows to interact with the application and the device. So we put it here. It's called app debug uh, uh, PC. And this is how it looks on the screen. And this is how it looks, and uh, uh, this is uh, this is how we can uh, we can make sure that it's done. It's done through ADB shell uh, command. This is user ID for all safe, which is uh, one thousand eighty user ID for our application. As this one, then we launch all safe, and the code should be executed. And you can see it highlighted, and this uh, function was realized in our application A APK debug. That will be all right, and uh, we can keep going. Right, on to the next stage. So how to automate search for these vulnerabilities? Look for the methods that are being used to um, invoke external uh, functions, search for corresponding uh, uh, vulnerable methods, and check if it is uh, uh, just uh, if the developer just resorts to prefix checks rather than a more comprehensive check. Taint analysis is something that allows us here to avoid false positives. Here we flag signature check, and rather than checking method in invocation, we check. Uh, method invocation plus uh, the absence of signature check. This way, we decrease the number of false positives. And now, a classical vulnerability for Android, insecure webcast receive. For those of you who don't know what it is, let me try and explain. Say we have a mobile application, and we need to interact with other applications that are already there in uh, in the uh, gadget say we need to uh, follow the charge of the smartphone or we need to interact within uh, I mean several applications within ecosystem need to interact um, it's done by broadcast receivers it has to be realized on the device the messages the so-called intents it's a, a data layout is an intent and it's also uh, some kind of uh, important information. Intent is action view that forces you to open the browser and the data, the available information is a link. Say if a browser processes action view with data, 
which is link, it would open it in a browser. So this is the way to have interaction. So how this is done in code? It can be done through Android manifest statically. There you have all the settings, there you identify all the receivers, and here you can just identify tech receiver and the information coming from intent will be um, uh, will be uh, processed by your broadcast receiver class and we expect to see boot completed what is insecure here you have this attribute exported true which means that the adversary may also go ahead and use this function. If, even if we get an intent, we need to process it, and this is done by on receive. You have intent on, uh, you have intent here, and this is how it works. So let's have a look how it works in all safe. In Android manifest, we have tech receiver, installed and this is the class to process it it's called node receiver the action that we expect is process node and it's exported true that is to say we can send something over to it and it would process so how it works in source code on receive method text takes in the intent and takes out the data so we're expected to get uh, a server name node etc so why it's still a vulnerability if it's an exportable receiver, then not just the trusted application, but also the adversary's application would send to us the broadcast that we're going to interact with. If we don't want to interact with somebody external, when we want to just limit ourselves to a particular application, then we'll put export it into false, and nobody would uh, interact with us externally. But if it is an ec ecosystem, then we have to have exported true, and then we add a permission that says that uh, um, it has to be signed with our key, that is, uh, that it is uh, trusted. So we're going to demonstrate how it works. Uh, so we are going to act similarly to what you saw earlier. We are going to unpack and then look inside and we'll look for certain uh, constructs. I'd like to mention in advance that you could have used JEDEX uh, GUI utility that allows you uh, to open uh, PKs uh, through Java, but sometimes um, it glitches. And sometimes in Smiley, it's, it's more convenient to work. So uh, using APK tool D, we un unpack it and we open it here in the developer's environment. We'll look inside, we'll look at Android manifest file that is of interest to us right now. And we do the search. We see the line uh, receive Android exported true, uh, no signature. And now we're interested to see the implementation node receiver. Here it is, node receiver. Yes, this one. This is how it uh, looks in the smiley. Now we open uh, convert it into Java using JADEX. All you need is put in the uh, file name minus and the place where we want to unpack it.
no, not minus T, minus D. Now it's working. Right. Um, so here you can see node receiver realized. Uh, we can see that we get intent and we get a, a string objects with a, a server node notification message out of it. Then we generate a HTTP uh, call and then to exploit it, we open WebCAD and we also open a debugging bridge and we'll send the intent with server and notification message so that we have so that node receiver um, processes it right. And this is the APK data that we get. Yeah, I think that would it, that would be it, right? Right, let me conclude on how to automate the search for this kind of um, vulnerabilities. I think the MISV and all that is a good thing to get into the issue and um, the descriptions are nice, but it's not enough. And then like um, OVASP Mobile, they are updated more regularly. These are the links on how attained analysis is done by us and how we analyze APK and bytecode. So feel free. And I'd like to conclude by saying that any manual analysis can be automated if it has to do with some basics. If it has to do with basics, you don't want to do it manually. Every time you probably want to create your own uh, knowledge base. In fact, you need to parse uh, Android Manifest XML and XFast will be um, helpful here. If you want a taint analysis of your own, then uh, we are going to cover all these vulnerabilities and injection reality vulnerabilities. But taint analysis is not limited to uh, injection vulnerabilities. It can uh, We can use fuzzers to identify other kinds of vulnerabilities. Hopefully, we were at least somewhat um, useful. Our, our presentation was at least somewhat useful to you. And we're happy to take your questions. Uh, we actually have couple of uh, presents from Ross Telecom uh, that we're going to give you uh, for really good questions. Uh, thank you very much. Why, uh, why you picked the vulnerabilities that you discussed in your presentation? And then I'll follow up it with the other question. So why these vulnerabilities? We couldn't cover all vulnerabilities. We decided to, to look at the client side. The approach to a mobile application should be split into three parts, and client side is one part, and the rest have to do with a server server side, which is difficult to find by static, uh, by SAST. So uh, that's why we looked at uh, something that can find, be found. And uh, the demos with Park are self-written, right? They're just examples. If so, uh, do you think it's applicable to real life situation? Well, generally speaking, Um, our task was to demonstrate that, yes, indeed, this is a vulnerability without going in depth. Uh, 
Uh, so we did it on our own. For the second kind of vulnerability, arbitrary code execution, this can be realized. It's pretty universal. Importantly, when all safe um, downloads a model, it's important to have it errorless. Why not um, ready-made exploits? Because all these exploits have to follow all safe logic, to, not to have uh, additional ex uh, exceptions. Thank you for this presentation. Very interesting. I have uh, several questions. First has to do with uh, code obfuscation. Do you think it is helpful to the code obfuscation? Those who are interested in APK tool and Smalley uh, could be pr thus prevented from going around the application. Yes, obfuscation is a good thing. It's just that obfuscators keep de uh, uh, developing and so do reverse engineers. So obfuscation is just um, something that creates an additional hurdle, entry hurdle. There are certain uh, SAS that also help you to analyze bytecodes and uh, do binary analysis and uh, analyze the, uh, the, the taint analysis and analyze the um, uh, flow graph. And it helps, but it doesn't really safeguard you from um, the vulnerability. And so there, there are ways to combat obfuscation anyway. Right, okay, thank you. And uh, how often do you have vulnerabilities in the stacks files? I think it's uh, decomposed uh, through Java, so some critical information can be contained there. Yes, uh, we have it, and also load class, and also DAX load class, same, same. Um, specific uh, uh, checking has to be in place. If we get this code from um, the open environment, we really need to think twice if we need to take functions from it. In the latest Android versions, there is something. So if you don't want to extend the application by ways of uh, plugins, you just download uh, IPK depending on the particular model that you're using. Thank you. Thank you for this presentation. In the very beginning, you mentioned um, that it is not wise to store uh, sensitive data in the client side. But what if you have to? How to store it safely? You have to cipher it then. You have case store for Android. So it's best for critical information to not be stored in client section, but the client side. But it is that if it has to, then it has to be um, encrypted. Thank you for this presentation. I have two questions. Have you? tried at looking at fuzzing because in uh, we have static applications that is easy to look um, at and to analyze code it seems to be easy to find vulnerabilities in this way and you looked at offline applications right what if you have uh, you have to go to web to a backend how to analyze How to, how to analyze in this case. Thank you for this question. So the first question is, why not fuzzing, right? Or rather, um, do you think it's usable? 
it is by all means if you have fields if you have forms there is a, a drowsy utility uh, that allows to substitute for broadcast uh, receiver the one that uh, you film uh, demonstrated manually it was out of context of our presentation though but anyway it can be used and the second question has to do with uh, uh, was about web interaction if, if there is a server well, again, you have to split it into several parts, and we were looking at the client side part without the interaction with the server. But if you have to look at server interaction, then in this case, we have to look at, the, at its code and what happens on that side and how uh, requests and uh, requests are processed there. And it's a totally different task, right? It, 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 but it's. But then. Uh, isn't your server a black box for you? Well, if uh, in, in mobile application, it's a white box because it can be decompiled. If we are allowed to carry out this analysis, then it's not a problem at all. Then it's not black box and it's not a problem at all. I also have two questions. First off, you just looked at application and we you, you were using an emulator, right, to test it. Have you had any situations when you would miss something because of using these emulators and there are probably some emulators that are targeted to attack the security guys? And you also mentioned that there are case stores for, for, for Android. Are there any embedded uh, crypto provided for Android and for iOS? Right. And what was the first question again? <laughs> Sorry, the first question that. Okay. Yeah, you mentioned that you launched. Yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> so, thank you. Um, so, in the context of uh, this application, we had to use Android 8 because uh, we had HTTP function that is not supported by default since version 8. There are some subtleties and you have to go with the application and what we want to test it on. It really depends on the situation. And then uh, let me um, let me clarify. Uh, by default, it's um, prohibition of uh, sending. Right. And uh, the second question was on case store, right? Right. Uh, you mean the encryption algorithms? Yes, yes. Uh, it's also one of the Android components. It allows to interact with the data that is already stored, yeah. And if you need to store something locally on the device, uh, this is the uh, approach that we need to uh, use, but otherwise you should uh, uh, send it to server. Unfortunately, the question is out of mic. You mean Grasshopper? I don't think it's realized in uh, Android. No, we, we, we uh, haven't checked it for cryptography. Good day. Thank you for this presentation. And I also have two questions. Uh, we seem to, all of us have two questions. Uh, first one has to do with WASP and uh, all that. Oh, WASP and all that. Uh, uh, does your top um, uh, coincide with all WASP's top? Well, ours is more relevant. I think it's still relevant. There are some new things that uh, are there in my SV, MASV, so you want to check it. If you are talking about scanning results, is, is this the question? Yes, the top is the entry points and the number of projects, right? And top one is the most frequent vulnerability, right? 
You mean the correlation? Yes. We get similar results. Right, and our second question has to do, is a follow-up to what uh, somebody else uh, asked when a token is safely stored. Uh, do, uh, why do you think it saves us if you store it in case store? Because if you can root it, uh, then storing the unciphered token in this place won't help you. Well, foolproof. You, you just have to obfuscate in any possible uh, way. And obviously, yes, you shouldn't store it in the open, but if you have to, then you could. But do you have the right recommendations that we need to give to um, to the... Um, well, you have to check for roots. Uh, many of these vulnerabilities uh, that were exploited through a debugger are exploited without debugger as well. So you need to cover that as well. And the version should be not debug release. But do you mean storage though? Actually, it's a, a rather relevant uh, question because in most of applications, token is, is indeed stored in the client side. And and it may be still a vulnerability, but with a different risk. If it's an IP, it's about IP keys. The realization of keys. That means that you shouldn't store it in the gadget. Well, it really depends on uh, how you approach it. I would put it this way. Thank you. This was a very interesting presentation. Are there any plugins that would help the developer who is not in the known of uh, doesn't know of, uh, of vulnerabilities to check for them, like alerts or something? To, to, to kind of introduce the uh, safe constructions. And you mean open source SaaS, so what, what, what do you mean? Not necessarily open source, though. Maybe paid. Well, I can speak of uh, Abron. As far as open source is concerned, that there is mobile staff, and it's good enough, you know, to understand how it all works. And we used uh, it for all safe as well. Not on the stage when the application is, is, is ready and we want to check it, but rather on the development stage. So, in ID, yes. So that ID alerts us that we are now using a, an insecure con uh, construct. Remember the uh, presentation yesterday? Well, we have uh, uh, some integration uh, with ID, so yes, the opportunities are there. We can, you can you can do it. I I I don't know if there are linters that can do that for you, but probably there are. Thank you for this presentation, and I have the following question. Do you think obfuscation impacts the quality of your SAST analysis? Thank you for this question. Yes, it does impact. For taint analysis, um, it's not a matter of the name of the method or name of the class. 
for taint analysis, uh, it doesn't really, it, 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 it is not a hurdle at all. The trace will still um, be built and we'll see the entry point. Thank you. Thank you for this presentation. You haven't mentioned vulnerability in a binary code. Are there any any typical vulnerabilities of this kind? Well, binary code analysis and statistic an analysis, this is that what you mean? Uh, external libraries, you mean? Yes, it's like C libraries. Ah, right, OK. So how to analyze it? This is done by reverse engineers. Uh, reverse engineers can uh, check this library. What I mean is, are there any, any typical classical vulnerabilities that could be used and exploited for mobile applications? Typical binary vulnerabilities for mobile applications. If you have access to file system and all those files are stored locally in the sandbox of our application and if, uh, we get access to it with the help of our attack, then we'll be able to um, call a different code, not the one that uh, was initially you know, supposed to be there. And it's quite a legitimate uh, attack vector in this case. Thank you. Thank you for this presentation. And uh, let me start. Uh, let me digress first. So uh, you you work with compile. Yes, our app screener uh, analyzer analyzes bit code uh, we use in pipe code. And the uh, and then part of attacks. What I mean, it's not necessarily relevant for Android or iOS. It's also relevant for a, a web. If you look at Java code, then some of the tags would be relevant both for Android and for regular Java applications. Is that right? Absolutely. And if we look at Java code per se, uh, do you think it is possible to to uh, to, to, to differentiate between a backend and application? Yes. Well, after the compilation, uh, if you can see Admir Android manifest, no, 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 no. Let's say Java file arrives to SAST. How do you understand whether it's a Java application or it comes from Android? Is it possible to automate this process? You mean you can call particular, uh, you can uh, detect calls of particular methods from libraries or anything like that that um, deal with Android applications. We need, say, Android SDK for this file to be launched in a good way. And then there is a rather high probability that, OK, so you, you, you judge by import. Yes, we judge by import. Import and methods, methods invoked, yeah. OK, thank you. I already stopped forgetting and, uh, you know, how asked uh, the questions and how do I pick the best one? I actually have another question. You mentioned that uh, you uh, downloaded uh, all safe to mobile safe. So what are, how you compare against up screener? A uh, two out of three were found by mobile safe, I think. Not not three out of three, and our analyzer covered all the cases. And our task was to increase coverage. So yes, it 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 coped with it. Uh, so yeah, probably the uncovered one was uh, the SQL injection, right? I don't remember exactly, but yeah, I think you're right. 
And all slave contains a lot of vulnerabilities, but you only checked for three. Yes, yes, because it's uh, the rest is just out of the side scope of of my presentation today. Thank you. And now you need to pick best question. I loved the question about encryption. The girl? Yes. Okay. And uh, we are giving her uh, the speakers, and we. I would also love the one about obfuscation. The guy in the green shirt. Yes, we have a present for you as well. And the very best question it would be the MPK. Thank you. Yeah, that would be uh, the best question. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for. Um, Listening so attentively.